Welcome back to Carolina Journal Radio. I'm Donna Martinez. A proposed federal border adjustment tax would cost North Carolina consumers an additional $800 million in higher property casualty insurance premiums over the next decade. That is the bottom line conclusion from a new report issued by the John Locke Foundation and the Washington, D.C.-based R Street Institute. Dr. Lawrence Powell is one of the authors of this report. He is the director of the Alabama Center for Insurance Information and Research at the University of Alabama. Dr. Powell, a welcome to Carolina Journal Radio. Well, thank you for having me. Let's talk first about exactly what a border adjustment tax is. How would that work? Sure. Well, that, that's that's a really good question. The The details of the legislation have not been released yet, so it leaves us to make a few assumptions. Um, no matter which way you make the assumptions, they're all bad, but um, it's a, a matter of, of how bad it might be. We make some pretty conservative uh, or some very conservative assumptions in our study. But so the way it works is whenever you buy something from outside of the United States, there would be a tax uh, that you would have to pay for it, which in essence would mean that the expenses you have that come from outside of the country would not be tax deductible. That's, that's the way it, it would manifest on uh, any sort of company's income statement. And this is, is actually a proposal from the U.S. Congress, not yet implemented, but is being discussed. Right, right, exactly. That, that's the idea of a border-adjusted tax or a destination-based cash flow tax. There's a lot of names for them, and, and none of them are easy to say, but that's essentially <laughs> what it does is takes away the tax deductibility of various expenses as an inducement to have people or to have companies move their operations to the U.S., and it's commonly known as BAT, B-A-T. Um, our listeners may have heard it referred to that way um, if they follow um, news analysis and coverage. So, Dr. Powell, the question then is, this proposal, if implemented, would have an impact on North Carolina. And that's detailed in the report that w- has been released by the Locke Foundation and the R Street Institute. Now, you're an author. Explain to us, then, the way in which North Carolina would be impacted. Okay, so <clears throat> a little bit of background. When, when we try to apply this, and I, I do not have a preference between a border-adjusted tax or any other sort of tax in terms of the overall economy. That's, that's not my area of expertise or specialization. But when it comes to financial services, almost every country that has any sort of similar tax exempts financial services, including insurance and reinsurance and banking, from this because you don't bring any jobs on shore from uh, taxing financial services this way because it's more the movement of capital as opposed to the movement of labor. So that's an important distinction. And the reason why that would affect North Carolina, North Carolina has a large exposure to uh, hurricanes, obviously, uh, several hundred miles of coastline where you can have those losses. And the losses can be so big that it's hard to, if you think about the way insurance works, you want to have a lot of things that could possibly happen that are not positively correlated. I mean, having one of them happen does not make it more likely that another one happens. So uh, a good example is life insurance. When one person dies, it doesn't mean another person is, is more likely to die. It's an independent event. And so you can, you can take the average outcome of that, and it becomes very predictable. For a hurricane, when your average hurricane is 207 miles wide and the density of the population along the coast of the U.S., including North Carolina, if you have a loss, it's going to affect almost everyone at the same time. And so you've got to have enough money to pay everyone's full loss at the same time. That means the companies have to hold a lot of, uh, a lot of additional money, capital, money above what they expect to pay out. Well, one way you can reduce that amount is by insuring hurricanes in North Carolina, um, earthquakes in California, but also earthquakes in New Zealand and Japan and floods in Europe and um, the tsunamis in different places. You've got all these other uh, earthquakes in Canada. You've got all these other exposures that you can pool your risk with. And where that happens is in a global reinsurance market. And so so reinsurance is really the crux of this. 
Yes, yes, it exactly is. So reinsurance is essentially insurance for insurance companies. It lets them get more diversification in their liabilities, in their expected losses, so they don't have to hold as much capital to remain as safe as as they currently are. So, so. Dr. Powell, then, uh, this reinsurance, how is it then that this border adjustment tax proposal, is it that it would make this reinsurance much more expensive? Is that why it would cost North Carolinians more to have property and casualty insurance? Well, right now, more than half of the catastrophe uh, reinsurance market is not in the United States. And all of a sudden, that would those expenses would no longer be tax deductible. So you, you would essentially add 20% to the cost of any reinsurance that's ceded to London or Germany or Bermuda or Asia or anywhere else that's not in the U.S., which is where most of this is, is reinsured to. And you bring all that onshore to the U.S., and now you no longer have a mechanism where you can share those risks of Japanese earthquake, New Zealand earthquake, um, Australian storms, UK floods, all of that becomes, everyone becomes uh, isolated in their risk. And so now we've already got an issue where the U.S. has more catastrophe exposure than the rest of the world put together by, by a large margin. So the benefit we do get from pooling with these other countries around the globe completely goes away. And what we show in the paper, what we show in our analysis is, is that because, it's not because the reinsurance becomes more expensive, that it's not a direct line to that, it's that reinsurance can no longer be global because it becomes cost prohibitive. And so then it moves all into the U.S. where we can't then share our risk with other countries and they can't share theirs with us. And those are very good things when they can happen. It keeps the price of insurance low. So when there is a higher risk, then, then folks in North Carolina who are trying to get property insurance are going to be facing higher premiums. Exactly. That's, that, that's the long and short of it, is that, we would see that that's what we're estimating, is because we would have to raise additional capital in the U.S., uh, the, when we apportion a percentage of that to North Carolina, it comes out to be about $800 million over the next decade. Well, Dr. Powell, why then would this even be considered, considering this, this impact on North Carolina and presumably other states for other reasons? Wow, I wish you hadn't asked that. <laughs> um, so that, that that's, that's a very political question, and, and I try not to be a political person, but uh, I'll, give you, I'll tell you what I've heard as long as I don't have to claim it, is that the optics of that would be really bad. If, if you're passing a tax that's going to be, it's, it's highly opposed by all of the retail companies, your Walmart, Apple, um, everybody that sells things to consumers thinks that in the U.S. that might manufacture them outside of the country thinks that this would be bad for them, and so they don't like it. I'm not speaking from this is what I've heard. And then you say, oh, but we're going to exempt uh, multi-billion dollar reinsurance and insurance companies and banks and, and just throw in hedge funds to make it look even worse. The, the, the political optics of it, I think, wouldn't play well. And so the initial pushback when, when people have suggested, why don't we exempt financial services, just like all the other countries do, uh, what, that have a tax like this, you say, uh, it's, it's a political problem. It's not an economic problem. Dr. Lawrence Powell is the director of the Alabama Center for Insurance Information and Research at the University of Alabama. Thank you for listening. On behalf of Mitch Kokai, I'm Donna Martinez. Hope you'll join us again next week for another edition of Carolina Journal Radio.